Hey folks, welcome to Black Gumbo. I've got some citrus trees here that need to be potted up. I'm gonna show you how to do that today. If you live in an area where you can grow citrus, you really should. Grab me one of those lemons. Who doesn't like citrus? I mean, look at this. You've got a Meyer lemon here that is just pouring out juice. I mean, you can't buy that in a store. It smells good, you wanna lick it? <laughs> All right, we're headed up to the Home Depot. We're gonna buy ourselves some supplies. We'll get these uh, citrus trees put in the ground. All right, so here's what we got. So I have these beautiful citrus trees that I purchased down at a local grower. I've got a blood orange here, I've got a, a, a key lime, and I have a dwarf mandarin. And I'm gonna put these in pots because I'm gonna grow them in pots, keep them small, keep them maintainable, and uh, yeah, well, we gotta pot them up because they've been in these uh, three gallon nursery pots far too long. When you're potting up fruit trees, uh, whether it's figs or citrus, those are the two kinds of fruit trees I grow. You don't wanna put them in a big pot right away. You wanna gradually pot them up to the next size. So these are in three gallon nursery pots and I'm going to put them in these five gallon nursery pots. This is a number seven tall pot and that's just about right. Taller is better with a citrus tree. You want well draining soil, you want good drainage, so they've got all these open holes down here. And uh, yeah, that's gonna be good. So let's get started. You can see that they uh, are a little bit big for their pot. And we're gonna put them in here. So, what kind of soil? Uh, citrus trees need well draining soil. The grower told me he uses very fine pine bark as the basis of his soil mixture. Yeah, so uh, we're, we're, we don't have any fine pine bark. I have some pine bark, but it's not very fine. So I'm going to use a different uh, kind of a fine, well-draining soil. And I'm going to make my own out of some components you can get at the big box store. When you plant fruit trees and fig trees and citrus, you want the soil to be really well-draining, but it can't go completely bone dry. So we want some moisture retention in that soil and we want it to drain really well. And so the basis of a well-draining soil can be a number of things. Pine bark fines is really a good choice. That's the choice of lots of fig growers and serious fruit growers. You can also use things like uh, uh, vermiculite. You can use rice hulls. You can use uh, uh, any number of really coarse materials. And um, some people just plant these directly in potting soil and do just fine. They will do fine. They're fairly forgiving. These plants are uh, uh, pretty robust growers, but uh, I'm gonna add some uh, materials to my soil to give a nice, well-draining mixture. Peat moss, perlite, vermiculite, potting mix, and in the bottom we put some pine bark. So for this mixture, I'm going to use one bag of potting mix. I'll also be using some vermiculite. Vermiculite and perlite in equal amounts. The potting mix really serves to add uh, slow release nutrition because it's got some compost in there. It's got some uh, coarse material. But this perlite, I mean this uh, vermiculite, uh, it retains moisture. I can feel there's moisture in there already because it's rained on it. And uh, yeah, this is a good stuff to help you uh, have a fluffy, but a well-draining soil that holds on to moisture. About an equal amount. We're really doing this by eye. We just want to get a nice uh, fluffy soil that's well-draining. Now the peat moss, I'm going to put three or four shovels of this stuff in here as well. Again, peat moss is just a, a water retention uh, bulking up agent. It holds water and um, it's just a pretty decent growing medium. You can make your own potting soil with just peat moss perlite and a little bit of compost. That's generally the, the mixture I use, but I'm going to put uh, three or four shovelfuls of this peat moss in here as well. Looking good. That's what we're after is a soil that literally just kind of falls apart and you can't compact it in your hand. It breaks apart. That's going to be well draining. You know, I could probably use some more perlite in here. Now again, the perlite and the vermiculite are kind of a substitute for what my uh, nursery man uses for these citrus trees. He uses fine pine bark. If you can get pine bark fines, they sometimes sell it as soil conditioner. 
that's a really good choice. The peat moss will help raise the acidity slightly, and that's what we want. Like I said, some people will uh, tell you that citrus trees prefer neutral soil. That's, that's really up for debate. I trust my grower. He's been doing this and breeding citrus and has the largest private collection in the state of Texas, uh, John Panzarella. And uh, I'll go with what he says because I've seen his trees and I've seen his results. So there we go. We're starting to get a little bit better here with the, that addition of a little bit more perlite. So what is our ratio? I have one bag of organic, um, commercial organic potting mix. That potting mix contains a little bit of perlite, a little bit of uh, topsoil, and a little bit of uh, compost. That will give a slow release fertilizer uh, for this plant in case I forget to fertilize sometime. It's got something in there keeping, keeping the nutrition uh, cycle going. But to that bag of compo or to that bag of potting mix, we've added about four shovelfuls of peat moss, maybe five, and we've added about four shovelfuls of vermiculite, and we've added about five shovelfuls of perlite, and that should do. It doesn't have to be exact. Again, what you're going for is just a, a nice, fluffy, doesn't hold together, breaks apart real easy, well-draining soil, and that should do fine. The first thing I like to do with any kind of potted plant is I like to uh, make sure that all my soil that I worked so hard to make is not going to drain out these holes, and these are pretty large holes in the bottom. So what I'm going to do is put some wood chips in the bottom of this, some wood mulch. And some people say if you put wood mulch in there, it's going to bind up nitrogen in your soil, and it's going to rob your plants of nutrients. It's going to bind up nitrogen in your soil, but only at the horizon where that wood chip meets the soil. It's not going to rob your nutrients way up here, only down there. And by the time the plant roots get down there, and by the time that, um, that they really need all the nutrition they can get out of your soil, that wood chip breakdown process will be almost complete and it will have stabilized and you don't have to worry about it. So don't be afraid to use wood chips. For my wood chips, I have some pine bark mulch, which ultimately is uh, beneficial for this soil. And I'm just gonna place it in there and make sure that it blocks those holes. And then we can put our soil mixture in. We need to plan ahead. We want our root ball to sit in the pot where we don't cover up any of the trunk of the tree. Where you see these roots begin to spread out, you don't want any of that buried. In fact, even if that's exposed, that's okay. So you want to kind of judge how much soil in there that we're going to need to set that plant on and place it in there. I think that ought to do. Let's see. Yeah, that's perfect. All right. Let's take this guy out of his pot. When you take these out, what you want to do is get a good look at the root system. We don't see too much circling, but if you do, you want to just kind of break that up. You don't want this guy circling around looking for resources. That's a pretty good root system. I'm going to keep some of that native soil that it's used to in there. There we go drop that right there that's perfect now you see we're not going to need much to fill in here so uh, let's go ahead and get this guy situated where he's oriented in the right direction I want him growing straight up this is a sanguinelli blood orange and I'm looking forward to having some of these red fleshed oranges All right, here's some of our soil mixture and it's nice and fine so it just flows right down in there you can tamp it down press it down in there there we go. That should do. It doesn't take much. In fact, that might be a little too much. Now this will settle over time. So you want to pay attention to your plant and make sure that it's got enough soil to grow in there. That gives it an inch all around and about six inches of new potting soil to grow this year. And that's just perfect. I'm going to place some mulch on top. And the mulch I'm going to use is rice hulls. Let me grab some. Now, what I want you to notice about citrus trees, there is a rootstock here, and you can see where the graft was. Almost all citrus trees, almost all, 
are grafted onto a strong rootstock. And this rootstock, you don't want to, you don't want anything to cover up uh, that graft. What's going to happen is if you cover that graft, this uh, portion of the of the the grafted plant uh, is going to begin to send out its roots, and you don't want that to happen because this tree doesn't have as good roots as the rootstock. That's why it's grafted onto a rootstock. That rootstock is very vigorous and very strong, and will support this graft, and you'll have a healthy plant. So there we go. That's our first up potted citrus tree and you'll notice again there are roots down here they don't really seem to be circling too bad but the ones that kind of are I'm gonna loosen them up a bit yeah they're not doing so bad at all what's left in the pot I'll dump in there sit this guy right there yeah that's perfect you want to orient your plant where it's straight up and down or however you want it to grow. If you need to do some correction to the direction it's growing, now's the time to do it. We've put rice hulls on here as a mulch. And rice hulls are a nice, uh, a nice option for mulching. You can also use rice hulls in your soil as, a, uh, as an agent to keep it from compacting so much. It will break down and it will release micronutrients specifically silicone, the element silicone, into your soil in trace amounts, and some plants really benefit from that. Rice hulls can also be made into biochar. It's a very useful byproduct. It's a very renewable byproduct, and it's pretty cheap, although you gotta buy it in a, in a pretty large bale. It'll last you a long time. Um, this stuff is good stuff for mulch, and so uh, I'm gonna use that for mulch this year. You could also use wood chips, pine bark mulch, any kind of mulch is good, but always mulch your plants. It helps to retain moisture. It helps to keep weeds out. And uh, yeah, it's just a good practice to be in. You can see the difference between the three gallon pot and the five gallon pot. That'll give this plant a little bit of a boost for the spring and let it grow up. And next year we'll repot it up to the next size. I do want to show you the difference between a grafted plant and a plant started from seed. This is a, a kaffir lime, and a kaffir lime is grown for its leaves, and it's very popular in, in Thai cooking. You can see it's got these double-lobed leaves, and they're very fragrant. They have a lime smell. The fruit of the kaffir lime can be used too, but it's uh, very much filled with seeds, and uh, it's very ethnic in its uses. But you can see this plant has no scar, no graft scar. That's because this plant was started from seed. A seed started citrus tree like this will take much longer to bear fruit. In fact, this uh, could take uh, five to seven years to bear fruit. But the reason this was started from seed is you grow a kaffir lime mainly for the leaves and the leaves are already available. So yeah, that's the difference between a grafted tree and a, a seed started tree. All right, so there we have our up potted citrus plants. They are uh, ready to, to go another year. That will give them enough space and enough room to spread out their roots down in that bottom six or six or eight inches of soil that we've added there. And that inch that's all around the root ball, it'll let them grow a bit more and uh, they'll be just fine in those pots for another year. Uh, they are relatively easy plants to grow if you live in the right climate. The benefit of potted citrus is you keep them small and they don't get really, you know, they can get 20 or 30 feet tall if you plant them in the ground. But then you can't get up in the roots. I see all around my neighborhood, everyone's got Satsuma oranges and they just waste them. They fall to the ground because you can't get up in that tree and get those oranges at the top. And there's far more mini oranges than you need. A tall tree, you can't really, you can't really care for it as easily. If you keep them in a pot and you keep them small, then uh, these trees are actually uh, easy to maintain. If you do put them in the ground, they're actually really easy as well if you keep them small. Right to my left, I have a Meyer lemon tree and that lemon tree is uh, just about as large as I'm gonna let it go. And uh, we have far more lemons than we could ever possibly use. So, there you go. Thanks for joining me on Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. If you have citrus questions, I'll try to answer them. I'm not an expert on citrus, but I've learned a little bit this year. So uh, leave a comment. We love your comments and love to banter back and forth. Follow us on Instagram. We post photos of our garden and how we use our garden and cook. Follow us on Facebook and like us uh, here and subscribe. If you haven't done so already, click the bell. You'll be notified and we'll talk to you next time. Happy gardening. Take care.